We'll practice a few just hands-on exercises in FreeCAD, primarily FreeCAD. So, okay, so let's go back to the, the dock and let's talk about a few things here. Once again, um, let's do a little little exercise, a few of the little exercises. First, let's start by for transparency of development. And um, as we do in the group process, it's interesting to see, to look at, like if you're looking up over somebody's shoulder to share the screen. So can we share the screen with everybody? I.e., take a look at um, within is it possible to do that within Discord? Because that, that's a useful feature, like when people are working together, that you can see wh what somebody else is working on. If you want to <coughs> communicate about it or collaborate with like a bunch of people like you were in, in real life with looking at their monitor screens. Um, can people try that? Let, let's just do that. I'm not going to go into the spatial exercise, but... Can people share their screen? So... Does that actually work within Discord? Yeah. It should be. Yes, it does, but it will ruin the surprise for you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the intro right now. Oh, bring it on. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, whatever. We've done that in a freak out exercise where, say, somebody's a guide of Say, say you're teaching a class in FreeCAD, you can provide immediate feedback. I, I, I would look at, okay, here's the screen, we're doing some exercise, and, and one could provide immediate feedback to all the people there. So it's a useful thing. So let's, um, let's see. Odundo, can you do that, or? I already did. Yeah, I'm seeing a couple. I'm seeing Matt, I'm seeing myself. I'm seeing uh, Elijah. Oh yeah, nice. Um, seeing Od oh yeah, Odundo's there. I see. Yeah. Can Joshua, Paul, and Paul? Is it working? <laughs> Paul, can you try sharing your screen? <laughs> Wondering why. I'm just seeing. I was just seeing red. Or Okay, so let's go through, I won't necessarily go in the order in there, but okay, pr build procedure exercise. So go into FreeCAD and just a very simple thing of demonstrating what you can do. Uh, let's, let's just download a sample file that exists so we don't spend any time on that. So go to SH Seed Home 2 CAD and say take, take the first module, wall module 1. Um, but you have to pay attention to which one is the one that's actually with parts. So that means take the first one. So click on the last one there and let's see what we can do. How the idea of simply hiding and un unhiding parts can get you to a build instructional. Because basically in a build you have to know which goes in first. If you have an entire assembly you know what happened first and second. You can actually organize a file by doing by numbering it and simply going through a, a hide unhide procedure. So say you're making an instructional. So let's take a look at that. Open up so open up the file that you just downloaded. So take take the C D home wall module one. Do you have a link for that that you quickly throw in so I don't have to find Regarding
regarding the discourse, is there a way we can collapse or, or make the apprenticeship link much more visible or like a shortcut to it? Because oh, it's okay. like there's so many things there. In Discord, yeah. A lot of times mean, it's like... Yeah. That's kind of how a lot of the servers get. It's just... Yeah, so that's the link. Take Download the last file there in the version history. So download that open it and just want to show so we we can actually be what we'd like to do is effectively look at each other's screen also to so I can see what you're doing you can you can uh, uh for your own personal discord you can uh collapse certain things on the left there's a little uh, triangle a little arrow on the side of each uh, category Let's see. Um, okay. Well, what I wanted to show is uh, when you make the part tree, it happens in the order that you built it. But it doesn't mean that it's the build order. If you wanted to do a build procedure, try this. How do you? How would you arrange these things in an order within the the part tree so it's actually useful for instructional purposes? Like, say, no, somebody did not see this. Well. Oh, Somebody's completely unfamiliar with this, they want to build this panel, you're using FreeCAD to help them document. So what you can do, there's a rename thing. So you can go, okay, say uh, the top plate, well, we actually did do that first. So name it as one, and then we attach the left, st say, say the second st step is this left stud, so we call that number two. And then do like a third part. We'll attach the bottom. Call that number D. So right click, rename it. Okay, but do this at the same time so you get practice doing this. Is this the latest one? Mm -hmm. It's so it's the first in the version history. Okay. Um, so I called that you know the, the base plate number three, and then we say the exterior ply would say that's number four. So just name it. I, I, what I want to show you is how you can arrange them. So say you've got like a huge number of parts and, and they're scattered all over the part tree and you actually want to do a meaningful instructional. Uh, how do you get them? You can't arrange them. You cannot just drag the things, but you can do, what you can do is right click on the top, the top most item in a part tree, which is create group. And it allows you to do a group. Uh, and you can rename that group. This is the build order group. Okay. Now, whatever you throw in there, now you know what order you're throwing it in there. So put in the first one, top plate first, left stud second, base plate third, exterior plywood fourth. I'm going to just hide the rest of the stuff or delete it just for the sake of this and this thing. Uh, so I've got this build order package there, um, and I'm making an instructional. So, so in it I can say, oh, okay, build the top plate. So, so you can do something like this. You can do something like this. So you're showing a build order. You go like this. You already have the number, so you know what procedure it is. So you, now you click on a, that space bar to hide and unhide things. So you, when you make an instructional, your first slide would be that. Then you say, okay, then attach the, the vertical with some screws, then attach the base, and then attach the plywood, like that. So it's just an example where you can organize things in a part tree. That's an important thing. Why aren't you doing it at the same time? <laughs> Do it at the same time so you get the feeling of it. Um, point being, ordering things go a long way like if it's a complicated assembly like for example say with a you know, the, the door the double door is somewhat complicated you can do an instructional here to represent that just by hiding and unhiding parts it's the simplest way you can do for instructionals um, that's the point and you can get that order by right clicking and then renaming it now if you don't want to if you want to get rid of that that folder well you actually would 
click on that before you get rid of that folder because it's another thing like the build, build order folder if you if you wanted to keep take that back out you simply dr uh, select all of them by control and shift and then throw all those parts back into the top level tree item and then you threw it out of that build order folder and now it's at the top level so you're just keeping your part tree clean and the way we'd want to do this with we'd also want to do this with not the dumb file which is one one compound object you'd want to do it where it's a simplified object but it's got all the parts in it because obviously once you collapse it into a compound you cannot separate the individual parts from it anymore so that's just the basic thing another way to do instructionals uh, so I'll go to back to the work doc there's an example po point eight exploded part animations um, if you want to look at my screen so I download this file now for this you need like a free cat that's 16 is does not really have animation so I open up 19 for that but I have an example of exploded part animations what is that so I'll open that up and it's gonna probably crash actually but yeah, it crashes on me. So you got to use FreeCAD 19 to do this, but it's actually relatively simple. So, so go back to your old file, the one you're just working on, and just to show what the exploded part animations looks like, uh, with because it's a workbench that comes uh, stock. I'm booting up 18 here. Let's see if that would actually open. No, I'm not, I'm not I'm going to go back to FreeCAD 16, go to the last document I was working with. You can readily create explosions, and here's how. And how, how would you document it? You'd probably take a video. The cool thing about the exploded part animations, you can zoom in and rotate at the same time as the ex explosions are playing. So I'm going to go to the last file here. Okay, so all you got to do is go into, there's an exploded... In, select exploded animation and it's as simple as that you click on a face you want to explode and where are my buttons there oh, okay this sorry I can't show it There's, those buttons are not showing up here for some reason uh, but basically it will have one button that's that's like an arrow and when you click on that it'll just shift out one one step and you just keep clicking it to make it go as far out as you want um, so basically, whichever plane you touch, it will you will start exploding that way. So the useful explosion will be take everything out to the sides, maybe the sheet to forward, and stuff like that. But then you can just do a video on that and get a decent instruction. Of, okay, here's the older order order of how it goes together. Uh, at the same time, you can also hide and unhide parts as well, just like we did with just the space bar. So you can get this rudimentary level of of documentation for build orders that are also animated right within FreeCAD. Um, okay, so next next little little exercise. Um, does that does that make sense? It's useful because it's it's like right there you've got the functionality. Um, I'm not sure if my FreeCAD for some reason is not. I don't have those those buttons in there, but you can just uh, search explode part animation on the internet and it'll get you documentation on that. Uh, that's a pretty useful thing. Um, so just a little more. Let's take a look at, so let, let me show you in um, the version history at the module level. So go to this link. Yeah, let me type in the link. My, my, uh, what is you did? Uh, I don't know. I yeah, you have to. Oh, yeah. I see. So in OSC Apprenticeship, take a look at that. So once again, the, the FreeCAD file repository. No, wrong one. Go to... Okay. That's this FreeCAD file repo. Go there. Click on... I want you to explore what it means to do like a, what I, what I would suggest actually we have this crazy version history of things that are on top of where we're working but for what we're doing here it's actually much more useful as we're progressing because I for example there I updated this picture here so if you click 
on any of the images, you'll also notice that you can upload new version of this file. So we're actually keeping a version history within uh, the pictures of the actual file. And that's useful if you don't want to mess with the part tree like we're, what we're doing. Well, mess with the visual history where you're uploading individual images and you have to start with a new file name. Here you can just go upload a new version of this file. So try doing that and it tells you to choose file and that, that's how you do it. So that's a useful way to update visual history. Um, so I think we probably like over time might want to just deprecate this kind of a thing. It's I mean because if we have so many modules, this the, all these little images they're gonna just go crazy in terms of how much space they take up. We already have the gallery where you can hide the the former versions in the gallery already, which is already formatted like that. Um, okay. Uh, uh, so yeah. This is a question about like the instructional. So FreeCAD is, would be like would be good for the video or just illustrating how the flow workflow was in FreeCAD, and there was another. Um, Thing that Ken wanted to do for like the, the build cheat sheets. Yeah. Uh, just doing like dummy diagrams and kind of notating what each part is and like the order you put it in. For like that, that just, like that's two separate things, right? Like yeah, I mean, two different ways. So there you just copy and paste the image and right. annotate it within docs. Right. That's, you know, that's an easy way. Yeah. In a video format, you can actually capture a video of you exploding and and rotating, hiding, and unhiding things within FreeCAD. Right. And that would be like a, if you have a well edited video that can give you a quick overview of the build. And that's something that would be interesting to to generate in our ample spare time. Yeah, no, I, I'm saying both. I think both are important. Just like the, you can go and look at the build cheat sheet and it's like, okay, well, this, this is pretty easy. I just put these two together and do it. Or you can go to the video and get an overview and learn the workflow in FreeCAD. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's various ways you can do it. Okay, let's talk about build time calculation. If you're actually now looking at, let's go back to the videotape. You're looking at your at your um, your time lapse. Well, how do you tell? It's a very simple formula, but there's actually a link to a time lapse calculator, so you can link to that. There's a link to that right there. Uh, you can find out how much time it took you to do that. I mean, it's just a very simple thing. This calculator here allows you to take to to select, like for example, if you want to find out the event duration, in other words, how much time it took in real life based on your video, you have to put in the shooting interval. So let's take a look at a sample video and let's find out how much time it took for somebody here to do something. So we can take a look at, okay, so, so, so let's say Wes. Wes is right there. Okay, he just finished the module. <laughs> um, he was building intently here. Let's see, let's see, did he start? Do we have a beginning there? Okay, so say he, it's good to catch the place where you're just starting on something, like for example, Odundo right there. Okay, so I'm gonna catch Odundo right there. This is like the generic, like the whole workshop. So you have your own videos, so you can take the start and end point. But if we just assess that, okay, so start at second, okay, second, like seven, Odundo started. So I'm gonna look at, how far does it take for him to actually finish that module? So we're, um, and this may be like, I don't know. Oh, no, we're, okay, maybe maybe it's kind of hard to get it here. Okay, I saw one being completed there. Maybe we could catch that one um, by Joshua. Okay, so there. Okay, so I started at minute two. I see that the first lumber came on, 200, and how long did it take to actually build it? So that one was, I think, was a pretty quick one. We got... That was a uh, interior wall, I think. Oh, there. Okay, it's okay. finished, but did you... Okay, so so that first cut... Oh, sorry, I missed it. When When did it finish? Bam, right there. So we went from 2 to 220. So you go into your time lapse calculator. You want to find out how long did it take in real life. What's the shooting interval? Do you guys know? Three seconds. Three seconds. Clip length. What was that? 
almost 20 seconds. Frames per second, we're like 30 frames per second. So now, built it in 30 minutes. So you can read that off of there. Very useful. Uh, use that to, to analyze your build time. That's a quick overview of the build time calculation. Now, um, let's do one more thing. Um, so do you guys, under, so for, for our master build file here, we're working against sketches, okay? Now, we set the first sketch up on the floor, and how do we do it? Let's do it in real time. Make sure you guys can do this. So that, say we're building, um, whatever we're building, we gotta organize our build around a, a known coordinate system. Let's do, let's have each of you do, just real quick, a second, just go into FreeCAD, and draw your 16 by 32, because I want to show you how you do the second story. There's an offset feature within FreeCAD that allows you to do that. And that's how I did the second story. Um, where's my FreeCAD? So here, start a new document in FreeCAD. Okay, so you're gonna go to part design, we want to coordinate a team of working on a bunch of modules. So you do a sketch. So where do I do, and do this in real time. So how do you do the first sketch? Which, where am I going to go? Start at the origin, so do a square. So do it, do it with me. And then what I do, the useful thing right there is lock it at the origin. How do you do that? With the point constraint. Try it. So you, now you got it locked. You can't move this from the origin now. You're in a positive xy plane. That's what we said. We said x, y, z is zero. That's all zero there. Now what do you do there? Make that side 32. There's a point constraint within a, within a constraints. So that this whole thing, you have the cons all the constraints in FreeCAD. Click on a point. That brings locks it fixes that point to the origin, because you clicked on the origin and the point. Okay, now select one side. What is that long side? We're looking at it, say, from the front. That side's going to be what? Let's actually try, you don't have to do 384 inches. How about you try 32 feet, do the slash, what's, what's it showing me here? I'll close. Anyway, go back into the sketch. So here, uh, how about we do 32 that feet? It understands it. Yeah, it does. It does understand. Now click on the other one, go vertical, and go 16 feet. No, it said 16 inches. Let's do that again. 16 feet. Did it do that? Yeah, and it puts, a, it puts the result in inches. So now you have the, your orienting uh, location for the first floor. How do you do the second floor, though? Well, so if you click on a new sketch, there's a thing called offset. So when you create the sketch, make the offset. What is that actual number? You have to do the 9 feet plus the, the floor. It's more, because we're, we're going to go above the floor. Like if you see in the final CAD, which we have right now, there's also a floor platform and plywood on top of that platform and the top plate on the wall modules. It actually all adds up to uh, the magic number there is uh, 121.125. That's what's actually used in uh, current. I'm not building the, mod the second modules right on top of the first ones. There's also a ceiling that bonds all those modules together. The, the, the floor, second story floor platform. So copy 121.125 and get that offset to 121.125. Okay. Now, whatever you're drawing here is going to be vertically at Z because the offset on an XY plane is going to be in the Z direction. So now you're at 121.125 in the air. So now when you do your second uh, uh, square rectangle, and once again, do the Lock it down to the origin there and do the 32 feet on the one. 
Is that better than just changing the placement, the position? Well, you can do the position, but that means of the of the actual graph. Of the second and fourth sketch. Yeah. Let's see if that works too. So let's do both ways. Okay. You already done? Where was the offset? So offset. Uh, offset was 121.125. So when you click on the... Where again did you see the offset option? Yeah, so... Okay, so go into the new sketch. You choose the orientation and at the bottom it says offset. There's the offset right there. Got it. Okay, there. So now when you close out of that... Okay, I've got my two plan. I, I miss missed it. But Wes said, okay, that's that was dumb. Let's just raise it up from here. So placement, uh, position. So go into your properties and values, and then put Z, yeah, as 12 inches. So yeah, that works like that and better. Yeah. Uh, so there's two ways you can do offset sketches while selecting the sketch plane or you can do the parameters and now it seems like the parameters are probably whichever you prefer parameters are easy uh, so the offset is 121.25 yeah. inches yeah the point the point here is that yeah it's written in the document there but the point is just offset it whatever you want and notice that oh yeah it actually rose up so now you can actually seed the second floor at the correct location so now when we're working in a actual document the the master assembly file that second story locating square rectangle has been added okay um anything else i think that's about it just um we did a few few of these little things just just basic so you want to definitely understand how you can orient it with sketches and when you're arranging things, it's useful to put sketches down underneath you so you know exactly where to align things against. Uh, or just use the coordinate system to... Um, the coordinate system being, once you click on any object, it will have properties, typically as the placement and position values that you can switch around. So that's a useful way, either by doing move in, um, in the draft workbench or by just doing the parameters within the property window so i think that's it uh so with that said uh what we want to do is continue working on all the modules now um i would say whenever you start a new module like i think the, the coordinate system should be like we always work in the xy plane and we start by like say we want to design a new module like we're we've got like maybe a seven foot module we want to design for convention let's just do everything where we're we're going on the xy with the zero at the origin so that whenever we do things we kind of know where things are don't just like put it randomly somewhere else so we have a higher chance of um, just being oriented well and what's what's also useful like say say we save the part library files like I actually save the header like headers like header it's up at eight feet for the eight foot module like if you if you do the uh, let's see the architecture part library uh, what I did there was I did a positional part library that's a useful thing if you're going to download these parts and they already appear in the correct position within a working document like I saved the header for eight foot tall modules so anytime you download that that's going to be in a zero 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 coordinate plane that's the origin and this header will download if you're in a in the XY plane at zero it will get you to that eight foot and also the bottom plate will get you to that bottom plate at the correct location as if you're building a module so it's useful to to see these positional part libraries so when you're creating the modules in the first place you can drag and drop effectively drag and drop merge correct located parts so you don't have to draw them up again um, just just some hints on how to do this because it's like it seems like doing all these modules we should be able to do that like in a second but you can do this manually, like just, just by downloading things in this manner before we get to the full parametric method of, you know, we have these things automatically designed in the future versions. It's just drag and drop in a, in a CD Go Home builder 
workbench, you know, which we don't have yet. It's just some useful, useful ways to, to orient around. So right now what we want to do is continue on all the modules. Like um, we, we've got a bunch of them. We got to just keep going. And I would like to see if we can get all of them done by, fr by Saturday. Like by the end of the day, Saturday, we've got all of them. So we've got still, how many do we have left? Um, we're missing like a lot of the second floor. There's like maybe one third of the first floor is missing. Um, then there's interior walls. Interior walls are all eight, uh, they're uh, two by fours. All of those, except for one kitchen wall where you have the utilities, they're all two by fours. So that's just basically redoing what we have now, but using two by four lumber, it's not two by sixes. Things like the, what's useful about the second story platform is the cutout for the stairway. Well, that's gonna determine exactly where the walls are that line the stairway. So. Things like that. Um, the once you have more parts in there, you see that oh, okay, I can align against those parts. It's useful to within the big model now that it's getting many many parts to hide and unhide things with a space bar, or just simply extract like one or two pieces. Like say you want just the second story platform to so you don't get confused by the bottom pieces. Just extract it into a new document and work with that to get the positionally correct file and then work from there. But yeah. Uh, so in principle, it could be could be quick, but yeah, it's, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to it and actually manipulate these things in 3D, so that yeah, you can you can readily get new house models. But we're still, uh, I think we pretty much have all the modules already done. I did the hidden doors. Now it's basically f filling in replicas of what we already have. Uh, I think we have the second story window, so it's like right now, I mean, this could go pretty fast if we're well oriented. Where are we keeping track of all the all that still? Um, we've got, I think probably the best place to go is to go to the CAD file and just take a look at the ones that are red and, and keep filling them in. We have the spreadsheet, there's, uh, are we using the spreadsheet? Is the spreadsheet working or what's working? Okay, the spreadsheet definitely works. Is there a link to the spreadsheet? Um, Yeah, put it on the front page there. Oh, link yeah. to the. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. It's in the index of the 120 design lessons as well. Did you put it in the present document? That's the master spreadsheet. Once you have the file, make sure you upload it to the to the wiki. Well, let's see. I'll put the spreadsheet. So any questions about the, the process now? I mean, it should go a little faster because I think we just about, for all the modules, we have them except for the interior ones. 
some of the interior ones that are fractional they're not like all full, full four feet there's a bunch of the the nine foot interior interior nine foot and eight foot it's effectively identical I mean the best way to look to understand how they're they're designed is go look at um, I mean this thing right here only thing we have to consider is where the utility channel is we're just doing the framing and the blocking as normal um, it's instead of two by sixes it's two by fours we're not doing a utility channel detail yet, just um, we can do the interior sheathing. If a wall's got, um, but the interior walls typically have two sides, so you put the sheathing on both sides and utility channel typically on both sides. Um, we're not there yet for a lot of that. Maybe we can go over that. Um, maybe first thing tomorrow. I think that we have enough on the outside panels, the exterior walls. It could take us a little bit of time. Questions or do people are people pretty good to go? Pretty much good to go. So continue the, the housing assembly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So idea by by the end of the week we've got the full digital model. And we can get that out. Like I want to send it out to to the architects and say, hey, help us yeah. just just prepare a building package for the, the building department. Everything's in here. See if we can do that. 